Hey, y'all, and welcome to another edition of Talented Television. I am your host, Kimberly E. Shell. This is our holiday edition. So happy holidays. Welcome to all my old friends and my new friends. Remember to press subscribe and that little bell so you won't miss an episode of Talented Television. Also, remember that Talented Television and other great programs are on the Church Stars Network. So make sure that you download that so you can watch it on all of your smart devices, your Roku, your Apple TV, all of those things. Now listen, today we have a fun episode for you. So grab your cocoa or your coffee, a pen and a pad, because we are going to have fun. I cannot wait to introduce today's guest. So with that being said, let's get ready for the holidays. Stay tuned. And welcome back to Talented Television. Today's guest has been featured in Las Vegas Entrepreneurs Magazine. She is not only making her way to the top, but she is baking her way to the top. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Chef Shanice Levon. Welcome, Shanice. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. You are very welcome. I'm excited to have you here. You are Shanice Levon of KB's Creative Creations. Tell me how you came up with the name. So the name is very sentimental. Um, I have two children, one who um, has gone home to be with the Lord, um, but both of their initials are KB. So that's how I got the KB portion. And then Creative Creations, that was just like, I don't even know how I got that part. <laughs> but the KB is definitely the part that I had to incorporate them in some way. Oh, that is beautiful. So this is one of my favorite times of the year. I don't know about you, but Christmas time is something just special about it. It seems like people are nicer. I love Christmas music. I know it's a lot of people that don't, but I cannot wait to get my Christmas music on. So tell me, is this a fun time of the year for you as well? Let me tell you, yes. It's like you said, everyone seems to be so joyful, so festive, so just like full of jolly and glee, I guess you would say. Um, and yes, I start turning on that Christmas music right after Thanksgiving. And um, sometimes I listen to uh, Kirk Franklin Christmas throughout the year, so. There you go, there you go. That's a good one to listen to, okay? <laughs> yes, indeed. So tell me about yourself, uh, Shanice. Where did you grow up? And did you always know that you wanted to be a chef? So I'm originally from Bakersfield, California. I'm born and raised. I moved here to Vegas in about 2005. And um, no, I, I don't, you know, what got me into baking um, was that I, I was a single mom. And I was like, my daughter deserves a nice custom cake. But being a single mom, just having moved here, um, trying to find my footing, it was just like, I couldn't afford it. You, I couldn't afford custom prices. You know, I basically, it's like your grandmother used to say, or your aunt used to say, um, you got champagne taste with beer money. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, you know what? Regardless of how much money I have or I don't have, my child deserves to have a custom cake, a nice cake. Because I feel like celebration and family is it has to happen regardless like you know so we're celebrating a new milestone what do we do we want to celebrate let's get a cake we want to and i just didn't want to go to like your regular grocery store or anything like that not saying putting anything against them but i wanted her to have something that was custom made for her that represents not something that somebody else could have and so what i did was um 
I started out in Michael's uh, $25 classes. I took those classes. Um, I perfected my recipe. I had all kinds of people, like friends and family, just like um, trying out recipes. And I know they were tired of me, but. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what better way? You know, some people um, are in the medical field, so they need to practice on their friends and family too, but that's with a poke. So I think <laughs> friends and family got something, you know, good to try. So that's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. Many ventures start with um, hard work and determination so what type of trials or maybe things did you face and you were able to overcome to develop this beautiful business that you have today oh goodness um the first trial like i just told you was definitely finances that was a major trial and i know a lot of people can attest to this in the beginning stages you know um so that was one major thing um Another thing was just doubting myself. I did a lot of that, um, especially like if I had a recipe that was a flop or if a cake failed or anything like that, you know, um, those were major things that I had to come and, um, you know, just push through. And one of the major things that I'm facing right now is full-time entrepreneurship. So like I left corporate America to do my own thing. And let me tell you, this entrepreneurship is, is not for the faint. Right. <laughs> not for the faint at heart at all. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I totally agree. Um, I'm kind of in that arena right now. And it takes work. It takes work and it takes discipline. You know, there are days where I'm like, you have to remind yourself, this is yours. If you were working for the man, quote unquote, you would still have to get up and go and press no matter how you're feeling to get those coins. And so we still have to do <laughs> the same thing you know, for ourselves. Exactly. And the coin doesn't come every week or every two weeks like, <laughs> like it does in corporate America. I'm going to tell you that too. So some I days you chase the people for your money. Other days you just don't have it. So absolutely. But glory to God. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway. uh -huh. In the end, it will pay off. It will pay yeah. off. So it's definitely a journey. Um, and guess what, Shanice? We are equipped and here for it, right? We are, absolutely. We have everything that we need to have. He already gave it to us. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so listen, speaking of entrepreneurship, you have a beautiful daughter. Um, tell me, how was it balancing career and parenting, entrepreneurship especially, and parenting, what did that look like for you? A lot of praying and a lot of crying. Um, <laughs> I mean, there were good times. I mean, you, you know, um, but the, what I can say is I definitely thank my friends and family. Like I have friends and family who like, without them, I would not be where I am today. And that's, that's just the truth. Um, even though I moved from California, you know, and I was here in Vegas, um, I still have family members. Like if I had large orders for Thanksgiving, my cousin Jerrica would come down and she'd be my, my uh, sous chef. And I'd be like, girl, I can only pay you with cookies. She'd be like, all right. Let's <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. We like cookies. <laughs> right. And then um, I also have a good friend who is also um, an entrepreneur here. His name is Raymond Giddens. Um, and he's, you know, whatever businesses he had going, he would always employ me. And I was able to juggle that. And I was able to bring my work to his work. So I was able to bring Kendall, you know, to work with me. And then I, I was a nanny for two little boys. So I could bring them to work. It was like, it was just like God you know it was just what it needed to be I was able to go to work you know while working another job and kind of do everything at once so that helped in a lot of ways as well because I didn't have to worry about child care or how I was going to do this or how I was going to do that yes. he helped me tremendously and still does to this day so again this is our holiday special and we are excited here at talented television Again, it's one of our favorite times of the year. So, Shani, tell me about some of your favorite Christmas holiday memories. 
I would say the main one is just always family. Like I'm big on family. Our foundation is God. So, you know, we were always raised as God to be our foundation in everything. And so with that, we always came together it, with our family, loving on each other, cracking jokes on the, each other, yeah. um, eating, <laughs> just celebrating, having good times. So that is my most memorable times. Like just, you know, being able to spend time with families and family and friends, you know, um, during the holidays and doing those, playing those games like Uno or um, just little things like that. I'm the queen of Uno. I just got to let you know that. <laughs> you know what? And everybody has their own rules for Uno. So okay. I'm like, what rules? set them at the top. You got to set the rules at the top of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah those are definitely some of the things that i remember most about you know the holiday season is just coming together uh, you said that family is one of your favorite things during this season and for me it is the same i've been on the west coast a long time now um with my immediate family but we have a huge family my mother has 13 14 brothers and sisters you know Ooh. so it is a ton of them and we don't really get to travel home much to visit with them, you know. Um, so we made our own traditions, basically, you know, with just a small core of us. So I remember growing up, you know, my brother Eric, um, right before Christmas when we were kids, he would come to my room and he would sleep on the floor. And so <laughs> we would wake each other up, you know, first thing in the morning, Christmas morning, to get up together and go share in the joys of Christmas, whatever it was that, you know, we had gotten that day. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a tradition for us that lasted many, many years. And I think just helped bond us, you know, at Christmas time. Also another tradition, which we developed uh, more recently as we became adults, uh, my mom and I would go to Eric's home and mm -hmm. whenever we would go to their home, we say that their home is a keeper, okay? So we go there <laughs> to eat dinner and have fun and laugh and all those things together and play Uno. But then we would end up staying there um, for days, you know, after the holiday to get up, eat breakfast together. You know, my sister-in-law loved it because her mother-in-law was making breakfast and all that good stuff. Or she would get up and make breakfast sometimes. I didn't, but I like <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> neither here I nor there. Part. I get the eating. <laughs> My cooking is specialty. I only do specialty cooking. No, I'm hey, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. But those are some of the things you know that were special to me in growing up. So you know, and with Christmas time period. So I really enjoy this time of year as well. Now we talked about our Christmas music and you know the things that we like what is first of all let me just say this you already mentioned my favorite christmas cd of all time <laughs> christmas cd hands down i know it from top to bottom and i can listen to it over and over again so what is your favorite holiday cd or favorite uh holiday song Ooh, i think definitely my favorite holiday cd you already know is kurt franklin christmas yeah i don't know if it's because we just kurt franklin is just awesome in himself so um absolutely but as far as the song, I, I don't really have a favorite Christmas song. Um, I just love the, I don't know, I, I just love the sound of Christmas music in general. Um, whether it be like from your gospel hits or whether it be like Mariah Carey or um, Charlie Brown. I don't know, it could be uh -huh. anything, it's just the music in itself. <laughs> And music in itself just makes you just like, oh, like just joyful. I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a favorite one. I just like Christmas music in general. I totally <laughs> agree, even with the Charlie Brown. But for those of you that are watching, look, 
we have shared our favorite holiday song and now it's time for you to share yours as well as win a gift from talented television and we'll also pick a winner to win something from kb's creative creation so what do you need to do you need to drop your favorite holiday song as well or album let me put it that way as well as subscribing to talented television then i want you to tag talented television or kimberly e shell as well as it's kbs underscore creative with the k underscore creations with the k all righty you heard it kbs underscore creative with a k underscore creations with a k so you tag us both on instagram or on social media and once you do you'll be entered to win a special gift hey we're in the giving hey. <laughs> all, all righty keep watching y'all because up next we have something special for you shanice lavon of kb's creative creations is going to walk us through a special treat. So grab your hot cocoa, your coffee, your pen and your pad. Now is the time. We'll be right back. So welcome back to Talented Television with Kimberly E. Shell. And listen, Chef Shanice Levon is going to walk us through a special holiday treat. Shanice, what are you making for us today? So I thought I'd go something, um, go with something old school, something that you remember from your grandmother possibly making for you. So I decided to go with a uh, sour cream pound cake. Ooh wee, and I am ready, I am ready. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so what are the steps that we're gonna take? So what we're going to do, um, first of all, we're going to go through our quality ingredients. You use quality ingredients if you want a quality end result, okay? So you don't go for the cheap. You go for whatever is good. Now, I'm going to say this. If the cheap is better than the name brand, go for what's best. Because yes. <laughs> yes. in some cases, that does happen. Um, but we're going to use good quality ingredients. This um, particular recipe only has nine ingredients, and they're typically already in your home. Oh. Um, with the exception of one, um, which is going to be the 10th, and I'll tell you what that is in a little bit. All righty. I'm ready. Let's... While Chef Shanice is setting up and prepping us in the kitchen, remember that you can win a prize from today's show, so don't forget you want to subscribe to Talented Television, tag Kimberly E. Shell on social media, also tag KBS underscore creative with a K underscore creations, as well as give me your favorite Christmas song or album. Look, I love Christmas music and I am building a playlist here, okay? You might as well join in on the fun and win a special prize while doing it. So Shanice, we're now in your kitchen. Go ahead and tell us the first steps of creating this treat that you have for us today. So the first step, of course, is to make sure your hands are washed and clean. And um, I use gloves, especially because I'm, I usually am baking for other people. So you want to keep that in mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what's our next step? The next step is to make sure that you're using quality ingredients. Now, you know, you don't want to go and just buy something because it's cheap. You want to make sure you're getting quality ingredients. Now, if the cheap one is better than the name brand, so be it. Go for it. But just make sure it's quality because that makes sure that you have a um, quality end result. All righty. So tell me, what are the ingredients that our um, viewers will need at home in order to make this delicious cake? I'm just thinking in my mind, it's going to be great, okay? <laughs> well, yeah. So um, the ingredients that are used today are actually ingredients that 
anybody would typically have in their home. They're pretty much staples for the most part. It's going to be, the recipe calls for nine ingredients, but I'm going to add a 10. And I will tell you and show you that later on. Um, so we're going to start off with a um, three sticks of butter. And I mean butter, not margarine butter all right so what i'm going to do now well as you can see here i already put the three sticks of butter in here um and i whipped it for a while because it has to be you have to let it mix for about two minutes so it can get fluffy butter <laughs> makes it better <laughs> real butter yeah <laughs> um and then i'm also going to put a full fat stick full fat stick <laughs> <laughs> of cream cheese okay wow okay the full fat stick of cream full cheese. fat we're not gonna cut off no fat okay because i know they sell it in the fat free no that's not gonna work <laughs> okay oh so you're saying make sure it's full of fat okay i got make sure you. all <laughs> the fat is in there yeah all of the fat <laughs> and so now i'm going to add the full fat cream cheese. Now this is Philadelphia that I use. I like the brand Philadelphia cream cheese. Um, and so I'm going to add that. And you see how I can easily cut through it because it's at room temperature. So I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm going to let that mix up. So basically you want to mix and make sure everything is incorporated. And right now what I'm doing is I'm pushing everything down because when you use these mixers, everything kind of goes up on the side of the wall of the bowl. So you're pushing everything down at this point to make sure that everything is getting hit by that mixer, correct? Absolutely. The, the goal is to have everything well combined without over mixing nice okay All you right. can move forward so we also have um two and a half cups of sugar and that is your granulated sugar not like powdered sugar that's like your granulated sugar now in a lot of recipes you'll see like cream your butter with your sugar and what that means is you want to make sure that when you pour in your sugar everything is fluffy it looks like like pale like a pale color yellow um because your butter is yellow so it'll be like a really really pale yellow and um you just want to make sure that that's fluffy and incorporated correctly mm -hmm. let me see one third cup of sour cream the the thing with sour cream is anytime you see that in the cake recipe what do you think it might do kim oh what do i think it might do what do you think is the reasoning for the sour cream being in the, besides the name of the, the cake being uh, sour cream, what do you think the point of the cream or sour cream is? The sour cream, I think it would add like a moistness to the cake. That's what my guess would be. Ding, 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 hey! ding, ding. I want to win the gift too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> that is correct. Sour cream definitely adds moisture, so you'll need a third cup of that. All pound cakes, all cakes do not call for sour cream, but when they do, you know what that means. That means it's gonna be delicious. <laughs> delicious and moist. No one yes. wants a dry cake. No, no dry cakes over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna allow for the sour cream to be incorporated that nice we also have six eggs all of them are at room temperature six eggs we're not going to pour them all in at once okay we're going to do one egg at a time and what we're going to do is after we pour in the first egg the second egg the third egg after each time we pour a new, a new egg in there we're going to let it mix a little bit but that's it once you put your eggs in a batter you don't want to over mix it because it changes the texture of your cake or your pie crust or whatever you're doing. And I'm going to do that on a medium speed so it can get done. And I don't want, like, again, I don't want to over mix it. Okay. So um, you guys probably see me looking back and forth. I have a little cheat sheet over here because I had to um, convert 
um, this from cups to metric. So bakers um, will usually use a scale to weigh out our, all of our ingredients. We don't use cups usually. We don't do that because we want everything precise. So we measure in grams. We use the metric system. And then we'll also have two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Now, don't use imitation. Mm. Okay. We use pure vanilla, okay? I mean, if you choose to Im use imitation, that's up to you. But it's best not to cut corners again. Use the good quality ingredient. Now I'm going to add pure vanilla extract. And you can actually make vanilla at home. Did you know that? No, I didn't. How do you make vanilla at home? So you take vanilla beans, grade A. Remember, we're using quality ingredients. And you just put them in vodka. And wow. then what you'll do is let it sit in the, um, like in a cool, dry, dark place, like your uh, pantry or something like that. It takes about six months. So that's why, <laughs> that's why vanilla is typically so expensive. And every once in a while, you just shake it like that and put it right back for six months. And you have vanilla. That is very interesting. I never knew that. So that's why the real vanilla is so expensive because it takes them a minute for that thing to be made. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And then you're using vanilla beans are actually expensive as well. And vanilla bean is actually our mystery ingredient for today. Ooh. <laughs> I always like to add an extra element to things. So I took it from the vanilla bean pot and I actually just scraped it off. So this is what it looks like from inside the pot. This is, these are vanilla beans. Well, these are the, what, the um, contents of what's inside the vanilla beans. So sometimes in your cake or your desserts or whatever, you'll see the little specks of black, and that's just the vanilla bean. So um, I know a lot of us eat vanilla bean ice cream. You know the little specks that are in there? Yeah. Those are vanilla beans. Aha. Uh -huh. so. so they're <laughs> using that fresh grade A vanilla bean in there. Let's hope it's grade A. <laughs> exactly. I can only speak for myself. <laughs> yes. Like the, a recipe called for two tablespoons of vanilla. I just pour it in there, child. You got this so down I, to a science now. <laughs> you like the grandmothers and mothers now. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's what I was just going to say. I learned from my grandmother how to cook, like the foundation, and then, you know, they don't measure. So let me let this go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use three cups of cake flour. Now, I didn't say all-purpose flour. If that's all you have, by all means, use all-purpose flour. But what cake flour does is it has um, less uh, gluten protein in it. Mm. And it, it's weaker than all-purpose flour. And what that does is make your cake a lot more fluffier, um, and a lot more tender, and it's also um, softer. Oh, okay. She's giving us nuggets here. Good nuggets. <laughs> Next on our list, we're going to use baking powder. We're going to use a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And baking powder is a, what's called a leavening agent. And what that does is it helps your cake to rise. And lastly, you'll be using salt. You salt. use a little pinch of salt. And the salt balances out usually that, um, so it's not so sweet. It usually balances and it enriches the flavor. It like makes it Got like you. pop. <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> now the cake flour, the um, baking powder, and the salt are already sifted and I already mixed them together. Okay. And so I'm going to add these in here slowly because I've done it quickly before and have powder all over the kitchen. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we don't want to do that. So now to get it incorporated, I'm going to allow it to go a little faster for a little bit. Okay, you got it. All right, everybody. So this is the batter. 
what it looks like and i'm going to try to show you the consistency of it i don't know if you guys can see that very well mm -hmm. that looks <laughs> really good and i'm just going to continue to kind of uh turn it over mm -hmm. and just make sure everything is incorporated and mixed thoroughly and i'm not even going to do this too much because again i don't want to over mix it but i just want to make sure everything is thoroughly included and incorporated so the next thing we're going to do is use a spray or something for your pan now typically you would have done this at the beginning before you started baking but i wanted to show you all what i do just in case someone didn't know awesome so Thank um, you. we will oh, all cool. be your students today so that's perfect <laughs> So this is called a butt pan. Some people call it a fluke pan. I'm sure everybody's seen this in their grandmother's kitchen before. Um, they, mine is a little beat up, but hey, that's the best part of it, right? It's seasoned. <laughs> yeah, it does the job. So some people will use a goop. Um, a goop is a mixture of like um, uh, oil and uh, some other products that people might use it's better for like the cake to release so going back old school you might have saw your grandmother take some butter and rub it all through here and in the crevices and take a little flour and then you know mm -hmm. um let it uh get uh cling to the butter and that was so that the cake won't stick well let me tell you something child i ain't that old school unless i run out of what i have <laughs> <laughs> and so i use a baking spray and this baking spray, so I know a lot of people are used to seeing Pam. And Pam has a lot of different um, sprays. Like there's a yellow one that I use for regular cooking. Well, this one actually has flour in it. Nice. So if you were to use the regular Pam, Pam, uh, your cake might stick to the pan. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. <laughs> um a lot, some people don't like these other people's do it's personal preference got you okay and I, i'm so glad you know i have used one of those sprays before um for my cake shunnies and um i didn't do some right and it may not have been pam so you know whoever it was my cake <laughs> stuck <laughs> well there's a lot of them and you know what i do is i heavily spray it okay um, just to make sure and then you have to remember after um maybe two years you should be recycling your pans and like just get rid of the old ones um you can start using new ones so i'm going to spray so i heavily spray mine and that prevents it from sticking for me so and i usually pray over each cake and everything so i usually don't have an uh, issue with um with my uh cake sticking because of that i do believe that god is working through this with me okay because i take him everywhere amen that is beautiful so you are truly making these cakes from love that's a beautiful thing absolutely so now what we're going to do is pour the batter into the pan Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i scoop it out sometimes i pour it it just depends okay it's just the the only thing is you want to make sure that it's just evenly dispersed got you this is your end result as far as before it goes into your oven and i think i forgot to mention because i'm so used to this um, you'll put your oven on 325. Okay. Not 350, 325. Thank you for letting me know because <laughs> I cook almost everything at 350. So <laughs> I think we all do. I yes. think we all do. And, and then so how long will your cake cook? It'll cook for an hour. What you want to do is make sure that you're putting like a uh, stick or something towards the end um and that just makes sure that everything's done in the middle so while this cake is going in i'm going to um put this in there and i'm going to show you the end results awesome 
I cannot wait. Get into it, y'all. You can me? go ahead and cut into that thing for us. Let us see what's going on. You want a little slither or a big slither? Give me big. <laughs> <laughs> Look, but for talented <laughs> television, just cut me a small sliver, please. <laughs> so here's the inside of the cake um, as I cut into it. I want you guys to get into this and look at that crumb real close. <laughs> Shanice, that looks delicious. Now listen, everyone. You know it's the magic of Christmas, right? Christmas is a beautiful time, so... I have a little Christmas box here. Let me see what it is. Let's take a look. I'll be like, you know, little television shows. Let's take a look. <laughs> what is it? Oh my God. I know, right? <laughs> Let's see. Let us see. All righty. The magic of Christmas has brought me something delicious. Look at this, everyone. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I know you all wish that there was, you know, smell a vision out there and, and that you can taste it, but let me tell you. I'm gonna taste it for you. Look at this. Get into it. Woo -hoo -hoo. I am ready. Shanice, thank you. Chef Shanice Levon. I'm gonna bite this mini bunt cake now, guys. This is what you can win. Well, I don't know what you're going to win from Chef Shanice. She hasn't shared it with me yet. But I'm going to taste this, and I'll let you know what it tastes like. <laughs> Give me one second. I'm not even going to cut it. I'm going to just break me a little piece off. <laughs> let me find a napkin here. Here we go. <laughs> That's my Drum roll. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Mmm. This cake is fire. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying that just because she's on talented television. I am telling you the truth. It has all the elements that she spoke of. I can taste the creaminess of it. I can taste the butter in it. It's soft. Oh my gosh. I wish I could share it with y'all. Cheers. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Get your contest entry in because you do not want to miss winning a gift from Talented Television. One second, y'all. One second. <laughs> I have a website. It's www kbscreativecreations.com different creation um, on Facebook you can find me at KB's Creative Creations and on Instagram you can find me at KBS underscore creative underscore creations all with K find me on Google um, by just putting KB's Creative Creations in your search bar nice Shanice you have been an excellent guest today i am so excited for christmas thank you for sharing your story with us and look at me i still got a crumb okay thank you for sharing your story with us and thank you for the delicious treats oh my goodness for those of you again who have not subscribed please subscribe to talented television tell a friend also Follow Chef Shanice Lavon. She is someone to look out for. I'm telling you, once you all see her website and see the beautiful things that she creates, I know you're going to want to taste this cake too. Now, if you're interested in being on Talented Television, remember to send me an email at talentedtelevision at gmail.com. Shanice, do you have any parting words for our viewers today? In all things, keep God first. Um, through the good times, the bad, he is going to be the one who is always there for you, the one to bring you out. And um, that has been honestly, you know, with the help of family and friends, that's all you need. 
and you can keep moving forth. God is your first and always everything. And that's what's going to keep you sustained. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for watching Talented Television. Happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being a subscriber, a viewer, a friend. God bless you and your family. And hey, I'll be looking for you next year. Let's go higher. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays, everyone. Uh, we will see you all soon. Bye. One more time. Creative creation. One more time. Three. Two. I mean, frozen like mud. What's that frozen on your knees? Like cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Let, let me start up. Hold on. <laughs> like, man. My lips, the lipstick, right? <laughs>